We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. In 2003, Nike signed 13-year-old Freddie Adu to a seven-figure contract. But Freddie didn't live up to the hype. He has turned down every single documentary project looking closely at the details of his career. Until now. People are going to look at everything you did because of the hype surrounding your arrival and what they think you can be. I'm Grant Wall, and this is American Prodigy, Freddie Adu, from Blue Wire Podcasts. This is the California Golden Bearcast, a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Indeed and Bet Online. Enjoy the episode. I think uh, I think that's a good transition point because uh, we've talked about hockey now. I wanted to ask you: You've done hockey, you've done football. I've listed all the sports that you've done uh, till now. Is there <laughs> any? Is there any sport or is there any like team? Maybe it's a professional team mm-hmm. that you have that you haven't called yet. That is like, man, I I, I want to call at least one of those at least once. Oh. Man, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> I always think back to my sophomore year in high school. Like sophomore is that weird year of either high school or college, right? Where you're you can't win rookie of the year and you can't win MVP because you're yes. not a senior. And but but I played well enough that my tennis coach was like, "Well, crap! Like I guess I got to give Kate an award at the end of the season." So he gave me the never satisfied award. He just like made up an award. <laughs> and since then, everybody in my family jokes about it. They're like, it, it, "Ramage was spot on when he gave you that award 20 years ago because." You're you're still the same person. Um, this is you only give me one. If you have, if you have a few that come to mind, uh, it's perfectly fine too. I mean, I think it would be as a soccer fan, it would be an incredible experience to call a Cali Classico, like an earthquake, mm. LA Galaxy or LAFC game. Um, pulling back, you know, big picture, Olympics and World Cup are a dream of mine, um, and it it can be whatever sport. I've already I've already told NBC that I was like, it can be underwater basket weaving. Like I d- I do not care. I just want to get the chance to to call an Olympics. And obviously, it would be great if it was in person. They're doing as everybody is these days. A lot of their events just out of like Stanford, Connecticut, which is where their hub is. Um, but to get to call an Olympics and a World Cup men's, I mean, personally, I would love to call women's World Cup matches just because of how great the U.S. women's national team is. Um, so those are a couple of bucket list things for me because I've been so lucky to get to call a number of Cal and Stanford boo events over the years. Um, so those have been some bucket list items that have already been checked off. So, yeah, those are the things for me. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get to be calling Olympics and some soccer in the next decade or so. Well, we got an Olympics coming up. So, I know. You know. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I hope. Yep. Yeah, I'll be I'll be looking out to watch you on Olympic night in America um, <laughs> on NBC to wrap maybe up my be, Olympic coverage every day. Maybe it'll be a Korean handball. We'll see. You know what? I'm all I'm all here for that. I'm 100 <laughs> percent here for that. Okay, me too. Yeah. Um. I mean, you you talked about Stanford and Cal, and you know, as a Cal grad, I got to ask how difficult. Is it to be unbiased when you're when you're calling your games, or how how difficult is it to even suppress your emotions, like when you're watching mm-hmm. you know a game unfold? Well, this is gonna I'm sure upset a lot of Cal fans who are listening. Um, <laughs> I still, when I'm a fan, hate Stanford with all my heart. 
Hate USC with all my heart. Hate Texas with all my heart. Screw you, Mac Brown. I don't care how nice of a dude you are. <laughs> now that I'm yes. Podcasting. So I've worked with so many people. Chris Budden, who's a who's a sideline reporter for ESPN. She and I got to work together last year, um, and she got talking about Mac Brown, and I was like, Chris. I'm going to be honest. He sounds absolutely delightful. I still don't like his face. <laughs> what he did to me and my Cal Bears when I was a junior at Cal and he was cracking up. Um, <laughs> but um, wh- I've totally forgotten the question now that I went off on that tangent. What was the question again? It was just how do you how do you suppress those emotions when you're calling oh, right, a Cal right. game? Or like how do you stay unbiased? Okay. Um, so I will start again so you can edit that out. Um but going off of that, so so when I'm a fan, um, I, I have no trouble letting that passion out. But after doing this for so many years, it was a little hard the first few years. But now, because it is such a career, the same way that I can kind of turn off like the profanity, which I'm sure you can tell now, I often, <laughs> I often am a bit of a sailor when I don't have a red light in front of my face. Um, but same thing with, with Cal and Stanford. And a lot of it has to do with getting to know the people. That's been one of the really hard things. Like, I hated Tara Vanderveer. I hated David Shaw. I just hated everything about Stanford. I mean, let's be honest, I stole stuff from their campus when I was at Cal. So, um, <laughs> but once once I, I, I met them and have gotten to know them, like they are, they, they fit Stanford to a T. Like there's no way either of those two or a lot of the coaches at Stanford would fit at Cal. And I am, I am Berkeley through and through. It was the perfect fit for me um, as a college student. But they fit that campus so well and they're so kind and they're such good teachers, not just about the sports they coach, but about the games, um, just about life and, and the positive impact and influence they have on so many young people who then we know go on to do great things. And after we graduate, we also know that everybody switches campuses and everybody who's at Stanford undergrad comes to Haas and comes to Bolt and like we, everybody switches and goes to grad school at the other place and then everybody intermarries and it just gets really messy. Um, so all these years later, I now find myself often, uh, I know this is going to piss a lot of people off, cheering, as long as they're not playing Cal, cheering um, for Stanford when they're playing in big games against either other Pac-12 schools or once they get onto the national stage. But I will tell you some of the most fun games I have broadcast have been when like the Cal women's basketball team is upsetting Tara and Stanford. That was one of the best games I got to call a couple of years ago. Um, and, and the volleyball, the big spike, anytime those teams are going at it, I definitely get a little more excited when maybe Cal's making a rally against a team that's won like two of the last three national championships. Right. So, um, but I've learned it's best not to suppress that passion and just let, let it come out. Out, just make mm-hmm. sure you're doing it as much as possible for both teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, you know when I'm in the when I'm in the box, it's we're a Cal fan site, and mm-hmm. you know we're given media credentials, so I want to be as professional as possible. But man, it is tough. It <laughs> is sometimes, absolutely sometimes tough. You're pumping your fist under the table, no doubt mm-hmm. about that. And sometimes you know, in between quarters or in between sets or whatever sport you're calling, it's like. Sweet. I, talking to your producer, like that was an awesome goal by Cal. I'm so excited the Bears have a chance. But then when the red light comes back on and you're live, then you go back into, you know, broadcaster mode just because, you know, you don't want to, you don't, you want to celebrate everybody. You don't want to piss anybody off. But like, we look forward to, I'm sure it'll happen down the road. We've seen all the different casts with, you know, the college football national championship, how they have the the broadcast, but then they also have like the homers broadcast and the track yeah. broadcast. So I look forward to doing one of those for a big game down the road. We'll, we'll make it happen. Well, we're doing that on our website. We're doing fan watch alongs on YouTube. So if you want to hop on with us on any of those games <laughs> and you want, you want to do, you want to yell and scream with us and, and surrender Cobra with us and all that, <laughs> you're more than happy to, That's we're it. more than happy to have you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think you you said it perfectly. Like Andy and I, when we're in the box, we have a tradition where I go to Berkeley Bowl and I pick up. Uh, they have these three D gummy bears, Ooh. absolutely delicious. Okay. Um, and we, I always get a pack. And sometimes, if you're lucky, they have blue and gold gummy bears. It's mm-hmm. just blue and gold gummies. Um, and we'll get a pack. And every time the Bears get a turnover or a touchdown or a field goal. Uh, we'll get up bears each and then we'll cheers and then we'll eat it. Like that's our, that's our little way of celebrating in the booth and no one realizes that we're celebrating we're <laughs> just cheering, cheersing a gummy bear. Like who's going to call us out for that? Well, I'm going to have to keep an eye out for those gummy bears next time I venture into Berkeley bowl. Oh my goodness. They are delicious. The 3d gummies. You got to get the 3d gummy bears. Okay. 3D gummies. Check. Yeah. And check. <laughs> uh, I mean, since we're talking about Berkeley, uh, let's, let's pivot into that a little bit. Okay. Give me, give me your favorite like memory while you were at Cal. 
Um, doesn't have to be a, an, a, an athletics related thing. Um, anything of that sort, or we could delve into the territory of your, your top places to eat and like the places you still go to, to this day. Oh, wow. Uh, let's see. Um, one of my favorite memories, <laughs> which just gets to how big of a nerd I was <laughs> when I was at Cal, <laughs> and my wife will attest still very much that nerd, just faking it now. And people think that I'm not a nerd. Um, but as I mentioned already, I was a part of the rally committee, um, that, you know, the rugby nerds. Um, I like to think that we were pretty cool. The group during the four years that I was there was exceptional for coolness among the nerds. But, but um, the Friday before football games, because back then all of our games were on Saturdays, um, we had this thing called midnight singing. So at midnight, the Friday nights before home games, um, we would go sing all the Cal fight songs at the base of the Campanile. Um, and obviously none of us, very few of us were good singers, but it was just such, um, an old school tradition. We would often, you know, drink some alcoholic beverages afterwards, but while we were there, it was a tradition. People would bring milk and cookies and we would go like 1940s old school Cal and we had a songbook, Um, and it was just really cool to hear all these different voices coming together. We just loved the school so much. So I don't know if they still do it. I imagine they do, but it was just it was one of those like low key things that got you set for the weekend. It's like you'd, you'd sing the cow song, you'd have some milk and cookies. Then then you'd go rage a little bit and be a college student. <laughs> uh, but that was one of one of my favorite super nerdy traditions. I love the noon rallies on Sproul Plaza as a Mike as a Mike man. Um, you know, all, all the families would come out and we'd have the dance team. And now I know there's Cal cheerleaders, but the Cal band would come running up from lower Sproul up the stairs. And then we didn't have a microphone again. It was old school. And, and that was one of the fun things we got to do as a mic man. Like you had to plan what you were going to say. Like, what is your little trash talk about the team that we're playing? And I would always figure that out, like in the shower that morning. Okay. What are we gonna be saying? Um, but that was just really fun to get to interact with like little kids who you hope one day will grow up and want to go to Cal. And then to march all the way up through the campus to yell at the libraries, come out, like, there's a football game today. Stop studying. What are you doing? Cal's playing USC today. Um, th- those were a couple of my favorite memories. I mean, being being on Axe Guard um, my sophomore year when we won the Axe back for the first time in forever and getting to be a part of that terrifying field rush when we tore down our own gold post. Like, yep, yep. It's hard to explain that to anybody who wasn't there, but it was just pure pandemonium and so much fun. And then getting to be on the microphone for the triple overtime win over USC. Like, I've never heard the stadium that loud, but leading cheers in that game, it was it was sensational. Um so those are probably some of my favorite memories there. Um, and then food. I mean, thank goodness Intermezzo is back. I know that they, I know that yes, it's meant yes. now, but I was so sad when it burned down all those years yeah. ago. And then uh, I don't know who hit me up, but somebody sent me just a random text and said, Kate, it's open again. And I was like, uh. what's open? Mezzo. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So even though it looks different, because I loved how, uh, you know, Raleigh's used to be next door. And yep, you- yep. You get the salad the size of a small child, and then you get, you get your beers, right? And the best thing about the salad, which I still do, because now I, you know, I lived in the city for ten years, so it was too far away. But now I'm living back in Oakland again, um, and so anytime I can, anytime I'm near campus, I'm like, well, we're getting the cheap salad that all of us loved as college students because it was at least two meals, sometimes three, if you were able to space it out. You got like the loaf of the honey wheat bread, even though they oh. came with a slice. We got the pineapple that was always random but enjoyable. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and so I'm so glad that's back and, and, you know, yogurt park, like that's my go-to. I know there's all these cool creameries now, but yeah. I still go back again to my best friend, Megan, who we, uh, mentioned earlier, we met when we were at Cal. She just moved back here after 16 plus years out of the Bay area. So like once a month, we make a trek down, get some yogurt park, walk over to Sprout Plaza. She's got kids now. We were just there the other day and it was like, how crazy is it that we were raging on this campus as college students, not a care in the world, like single, not even a thought of what we were going to do with life. And now Mm -hmm. that we're back here having yogurt park with like your kids, this is crazy. So uh, to anybody out there who doesn't live in the Bay area anymore, I hope that you get an experience like that. I hope you get to come back um, with your kiddos or with some of your friends and just get to spend a few moments like that because it's really fun. Yeah. Can't speak enough about Mezzo. There's a whole entire generation of Cal students that, did not experience mezzo in college, which 
<laughs> it's but I guess it makes our time more special, right? Like, great true. that it was there when we were there. It's true. It's absolutely true. I think the the most underrated part about Mezzo is their breakfast burritos. What? Have you had one of their breakfast no. burritos yet, Kate? And I'm a huge breakfast burrito fan. Kate, what are you doing with Rob, life? Rob, what are you doing? Thank you for this. Do, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you know how late they serve them? Probably. I think, it's, I think it's 10, 30, or 11. Okay. Okay. So the best thing about their thing is the breakfast burrito is is it's one price. But they give you a little piece of paper, and you check off all the ingredients that you want oh, in your burrito. Okay. from. Potatoes to carrots to broccoli to cheese to sausages, Whoa. bacon. Carrots. You 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 name it. They do, have it. I hope you don't do carrots in the breakfast burrito, though, Rob. Well, I usually have- don't. I do like the broccoli in it. I love the crunch. I, I love the that. crunch. Yeah. But if you said yes to the carrots, I might have had to like lie down yeah. right now and say I've got something to do. This podcast is over. <laughs> but thank you for that because I love breakfast burrito. So now I know the next thing I need to do when I get down there. I'll, I'll make um, get up early, maybe on a Saturday or Sunday, head down there. Get some nice coffee and get a breakfast burrito. Sweet. I'm in. Yeah. I dare say their breakfast burrito is better than their salads. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a high bar. I know. Wow. I know. Okay. That's – you're setting the expect. See, I like to just – my life motto, one of my life mottos is lower the expectation because mm-hmm. you're never disappointed. But you, no, no, you've no. raised it, and I like the pressure. So I'll report back, Rob, because I, yeah. I love me a breakfast burrito. So I'll be over there soon. I am fully expecting, like, you know, a picture of you, like, fainted after the first bite of the burrito just because of, <laughs> like, what what had, what that experience was as soon as you bit into it. Like, that's – Challenge that's accepted. I will send you a picture when I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, if you're listening to this and you haven't had it yet, oh, man, that's one of my favorite things to get, um, you know, even if, if it's – especially if it's an early game day. Oh, man, getting that and then heading to our, our little writer tailgate that we have on campus. Woo, perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, I think that's a good place to maybe pivot and let's talk some real sports. We have so we have this mailbag on our website that people mm-hmm. send in questions to and our writers usually get to them at some point. Uh, but, you know, um, we haven't had the time to, to go over our questions for this month and a few from last month. So I guess uh, since you're here, let's uh, let's, <laughs> let's talk some let's talk some Pac-12 football. <laughs> OK, let's do it. <laughs> uh, the first thing is, how many people do you know? You know how at. At Memorial Stadium, they're doing those cutouts of, of fans and people. Do you, have you have you do you know of anyone that's that's done it? I um, do. And gotten the cutouts? I, have a, I have a number of friends who submitted pictures because they thought it was awesome, and uh, you know they're Cal fans through and through. Especially folks who don't live here anymore, who have been dying to get back into Memorial Stadium. They're like, this is the perfect opportunity. The wait is finally over. Football is back. You might not be at a game this year, but you can still be in on the action at Bet Online. Bet Online is going the extra mile to make sure you can get in on every possible chance to win this season. From game spreads and totals to team, player, and coaching props, Bet Online gives you more options to wager than anywhere else. You can get in on their season opening bonuses today and start off wagering on wins, divisions, and championship futures all day, every day. Head to Bet Online today and take advantage of all the great sign up bonuses. Don't forget to use the promo code BLUEWIRE at betonline.ag. That's Blue Wire, all one word. Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Twenty twenty has already reshaped how we work, and it's almost over. Businesses across the globe are challenged to be their most efficient, which means every hire is critical. Indeed is here to help. Indeed is the number one job site in the world with more total visits than any other job site, according to Comscore. Indeed helps you find quality candidates quickly so you can focus on hiring the person you need to keep your business going. Unlike other sites, Indeed gives you full control and payment flexibility over your hiring. You only pay for what you need, you can pause your account at any time, and there are no long-term contracts. And now, Indeed's new way of matching you with candidates instantly delivers a short list of quality candidates whose resume on Indeed match your job criteria that you can contact the moment you sponsor a job, making Indeed the only job site that can move as fast as you do. 73% of online job seekers in the U.S. visit Indeed each month, according to Comscore. That's total visits. So it's clear Indeed can get you the help you need and the quality hire you need as well. That's why more than 3 million businesses worldwide use Indeed for hiring. Right now, Indeed is offering our listeners a free $75 credit to boost your job post, which means more quality candidates will see it fast. 
Try Indeed out with a free $75 credit at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. This is their best offer available anywhere. Go right now to Indeed.com slash BlueWire. That's B-L-U-E-W-I-R-E. Offer valid through December 31st. Terms and conditions apply. Now, obviously, they're upset because who knows if we're even going to have football, but I do. Do you know people who've done it? I do. Uh, we've actually we actually bought a few. We had we lost some friends this year, so we actually you know um, with their families okay yeah. got their pictures and put it up and they're oh. there and it's it's nice because they said you can pick it up after the state after the season's over. We paid for both football and basketball, so they'll be at Haas after football season is over. But once it's done, we'll pick it up and you know I think I'm the closest one, so I'll probably pick it up and, and bring it home. And That's really cool. They're for, forever enshrined. Yeah, um, I love it. I know people have been doing that for, for baseball and football, and that's really mm-hmm. cool. You know, again, something we wouldn't do otherwise. Like, mm-hmm. one of the weird uh, – blessing is the, the wrong word, but just one of the weird – N- nice I, I don't know uh, the, the weird- positives that you can take yeah, from the negatives the positives. thank you rob help me out here it's time for <laughs> jeez um yeah okay yeah i think uh i think that's that's a good one that was one of the questions uh let's let's move on to uh let's talk about pac 12 football how many teams do you think that the pac 12 will have at the end of the season let's say let's say no more games get canceled and we play out the rest of the season Mm-hmm. Okay, that's under that caveat. Okay. How many, how, many, how many Pac-12 teams do you think end the season ranked? Oh, geez. <laughs> um, knowing the intensity of the East Coast bias, <laughs> um, gosh, let's see. USC is able to bypass the East Coast bias, as is Oregon most of the time. Um, I think because people respect Justin Wilcox nationally because of the fact that he was at Wisconsin and Boise with Chris Peterson. Mm -hmm. Um, If Cal hopefully again gets to play, I think that they will be considered maybe ASU, maybe Utah, same reasons because of Herm Edwards and and because of Kyle Whittingham. Mm -hmm. But gosh, but, but those are big ifs. Like I can, I'll say between three and five probably because the East Coast bias is so real and and some of it is out of hatred and believing that the other power fives, the other four power fives are are just better than the Pac-12. But a lot of it just has to deal with the fact that people go to sleep and like literally don't pay attention. I've had this conversation with so many media people and they say, look, I love the Pac-12. Like it's so exciting. Anytime I can stay up for Pac-12 after dark, it's awesome. But I just you know, I'm working the next day or my kids are up earlier. There's always some reasonable excuse. Um, So I'll say three to five. And I think the hardest thing is because the non-con games, which usually help pump us up, right? Like if somebody can beat an SEC team or an ACC team, then people start paying attention. And then it's like, well, sweet, Oregon got that one win. So now anytime you play Oregon, you've got a chance to move up. But without having those this year, yeah, I'm going to say five if we're really lucky and we get all the games in and three if the Pac-12 just does what it always does and can't Stabilizes itself and everybody beats everybody. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think you're absolutely correct. Uh, I guess another question from that, and it, this is asked in the, in our mailbag is could an undefeated PAC 12 champion that's not ranked to start the season receive serious consideration for a national championship playoff spot? Ooh. So let's say, let's say it's Cal or Utah mm-hmm. or was USC ranked? Oregon, was USC, Oregon and SC were ranked. Okay. So ASU might be the other one. But I mean, they they've lost the game, so I don't know if that counts. So let's just say let's just say Cal and Utah. They go undefeated. They win the Pac-12 championship game, and they're there. Oof, that's yeah, really good question. Hmm. I'm gonna say, and this is definitely my Pac-12 bias showing a hard <laughs> a hard maybe. I think mm-hmm. uh, a USC or Oregon, if they had been unranked again because of the national branding that they have been able to accomplish over the years, I feel like people would push and consider them. But going back to what I said a moment ago, because of Kyle Whittingham and Justin Wilcox, um, because people have been aware of the Cal rise and seemingly aware of like everybody who's coming back this year and and knew how good they were supposed to be. I think the NCAA, as messed up as they are, does like to branch out as much as possible, right? Like it's the same with the reason Major League Baseball was hoping for a Dodgers Yankees World Series, like opposite sides of the country. Like they know what that does to viewership and fan bases and paying attention and all that stuff. So Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so I'm going to say a hard maybe that Utah or Cal could get in. Do I think really? Yeah, not so sure. It'll depend on how they do it, right? Style points are right. such a huge mm-hmm. deal as well. Like if Chase Garbers has a, a Heisman worthy five games mm-hmm. <laughs> that we're able to see him in or whatever. Um, if, if the defense steps up in Utah, like they, they like to do and, you know, Kyle Whittingham is showing off the calves like he always does and people get fired up in that way. Maybe, but this is a, a, a long way of saying, uh, I'm not sure, but hard. Maybe. Yeah. Let's, let's go bears. Come on, Justin. <laughs> Let's talk about the Bears a little bit then. Uh, we got a question. We got another question here that says, do, do you think that Cal will go only as far as our run defense allows us to go this year? Oh, run defense. Run defense. Interesting question. I like the specificity of it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say it relies oh. on the offense. Mm. Because of what I've seen from the Pac-12 for the past number of years, I see you on the run defense. I think the run defense is going to be fine. I know that um, you know we've graduated and Luke Beckett left and stuff, but there's a lot of great young dudes. I mean, what Brett Johnson showed us last year as a true freshman. Um, I still remember the name Braxton Crodo because when oh, we yes. game last year, I believe it was Luke Beckett who said, "Dude, we call him the Crodo type." Because he's like the quintessential, like if I could design a linebacker, Braxton would be it. So I call him the prototype. Um, so I think there's, Justin Wilcox has done such a great job of recruiting and Tim, Tim DeRuiter too, and, and young guys knowing how many guys that Justin and Tim have gotten to the league because of how well they know defense and Peter Sermon too. Um, that has helped them just recruit and coin dang and stuff. And we know how good the pass defense is going to be so uh, I'm not worried at all about the run defense uh, and don't think that will be the breaking point. I think it comes down to what we've seen the last few years, right? We know as it feels like it's been the trend for Cal since we were students, Rob, like we know the individual talents they have on offense. Can they put it together? Because they've got so much incredible talent. So can they open it up and find some rhythm? Because if they can, like because of how good I think the defense has the capability of being, I think they could blow teams out. If if Chase and company, kind of like the 49ers, can get past 30 points a game, like mm-hmm. just how stout the defense has been the last few years, I think I think we could get excited about that fake run to the Rose Bowl that's not going to happen because it's a playoff game this year, and you know anytime Ch- Cal has a chance of getting there, they're going to get screwed out of it. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it comes down to the offense, and, and more notably um, the passing offense, just because of – like, is Nico ready to step up this year and really become the dude? Is Makai Polk ready to become the dude that everybody's thinking is going to be? Are the tight ends going to be a part of things? Um, so I think if the passing offense and the passing game can be good, that could be the thing that puts Cal over the top this year. Yeah, we're all we're all pulling for Bill Musgrave. That's, yes, let's that's what we're doing. Boy. I know. Bo Baldwin is a really nice guy, but I'm, I'm excited about this change. Yeah, I'm super excited. I mean, basically, you know, I've – ASU guys have asked me like, "Oh, what do you think the offense is going to look like?" I was like, "I, I could tell you what it would look like, but we, we, I, I've seen four practices in the spring, and all they did was run play action. So, if, if that's what you want to go after? They're going to do play action, but I don't know anything beyond that." Yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, got some more questions here, and then I think uh, we can wrap up here. Uh, who is your dark horse breakout player for Cal football this year? Oh. Dark horse breakout player. Hmm. Do I want to go offense? Do I want to go defense? Um, all right. I'll go random dark horse player. Um, hmm. Hit me. <laughs> uh, I'm going with number 20, Josh Drayden. Um, Ooh. Josh was great a couple years ago, right? And then he mm-hmm. played a couple of games last year, and then they purposefully redshirted him. Yep because they were so loaded at the corner spot and they wanted Josh to really be able to show out and help them. They thought understandably that a number of guys would move on. They thought Cam Bynum might leave, which he did. Thank goodness that Cam's come back. But uh, just because of what Josh showed us a couple years ago, I'm going to say that everybody's excited, understandably, me too, about Cam, about Elijah Hicks. Um, but but Josh Drayden is a guy I'm going to keep be keeping my eye on um, in the secondary. And if there was a, if there was a 1A, I'd say uh, my namesake, Daniel Scott, as well. <laughs> Just because he was another one of those guys. Yeah. Um, 
that Luke Beckett and Marcel Dancy and Chase, when we were talking to them before games, were like, keep an eye on this dude. Like he's not going to mm-hmm. probably show out that much this year, but, but when he gets his chance, and I know he's the one right now at one of the safety positions alongside Elijah. Um, so Josh Drayden is my one. And if he gets hurt or something, then Daniel Scott is my two. Well, there you have it. There's uh, Kate Scott's breakout dark horse players. <laughs> Don't bet on it. But you can mark it down and give me a hard time when they have a horrible season, which hopefully won't happen. Well, um, Kate, I've had you here for about an, close to an hour now. Um, uh, it's taking up my whole day. I can't believe it. <laughs> time flies. This was absolutely awesome. The one question that I've been asking everyone I've been interviewing that's related to the Pac-12 so far mm-hmm. is this. It's 2020. The year of unpredictability. Yeah. Everything happens that we don't think is going to happen. Mm-hmm. So here's my question to you. Give me a prediction about the Pac-12 that is so outlandish in re- any regular year, <laughs> but because it's 2020, it is plausible. <laughs> oh, man. Mm, okay. Uh, how about the Cal and Stanford men's basketball teams both make the NCAA tournament? Is, the, is that Woo! how is that outlandish and, and the cal men the cal men even win around one game I, I, I like what mark fox is building uh, this is 2020 so I, I figured i would just push all my chips into the center but uh, i like mark fox got to meet him a few times last year i like what he's building um so yeah those are my super random probably not going to happen but it's 2020 i, I mean i could have said cal to the national championship game in football but I'm not sure that's going to happen. I just want them to play a damn game. So, so I'm going. I'm looking ahead to hoops. Hopefully, they'll get to play those as well, um, and we'll get to see some March Madness this year. Yes, I am. I am for that. One hundred percent for that. So much last year. Yes. Yeah, because uh, you know the reason I'm also for that is because I have a Discord channel with my buddies, and one of the tags they put for my name is that it's hashtag still rooting for Cal basketball. So <laughs> I love it. Me too, baby. They're coming back. The years of Joe Ship and Brian Weathers and Leon Poe and Amit Tamir and all those kind of like random teams when we were at Cal. Yes. Um, yes. It was damn fun. So this My boy Max Zang. That's, yes. that's- Max, that's right. My boy Max Zeng. Oh. That is my dude. Yeah. And Chen Yu with the women's team the last couple of years. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Yep. So those those are those are my buddies. But yeah, definitely. Well, um, Kate, thank you again uh for joining us. I love that prediction that you made at the end. For people that don't know where to find you or how to even listen to you on radio, where can they find you? What times of the day can they find you on radio? Oh. Give me all of it. Give me all of the – all of Too the early, things. Rob. Too early. Well, I'm on the social medias at Kate, the letter T, and then Scott because some jerk took Kate Scott before I could get to it. So Kate T. Scott on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, and now, as I mentioned, back hosting a morning show in the Bay Area. We're called The Morning Roast. Bonte, Joe, and me, and we're on 95.7 The Game FM here in the Bay Area. If you're not living in the Bay, you can go on to radio.com, the, the website. It's free. You can listen to us, or you can download the free radio.com app. And one of the cool things is uh, we have a rewind button as opposed to Ooh. everything else. So we're on Monday through Friday, 6 to 10 a.m., which I know is early most of the time, especially early for a lot of you folks during this pandemic, but you can rewind. So you can wake up at 11.30 in the morning and just – Hit the morning roast, and it'll start from the beginning of our show. Um, and, and I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, and we're on Twitch as well. So if you want to see my face, Ooh. super weird, kind of creepy reason at like 6.03 in the morning, twitch.tv slash 95.7 The Game. So looking forward to hopefully talking some Cal football soon. We've been wanting to, but obviously because last week's game was canceled, uh, didn't get a chance to, but looking forward to having J-Dub, Justin Wilcox, and some other guys on soon. So uh, thanks so much for having me on, Rob. This was so much fun going back down memory lane, looking ahead. Keep up the great work, my man. I will get back to you on that breakfast burrito soon. (laughs) I appreciate it. And maybe we can grab a breakfast burrito when the pandemic is over. Done. I'm in in. person. Great. Go Bears, baby. Yes. Well, that's it for the Golden Bear cast this week. Uh, If you're listening to us, you already found us, so I don't need to tell you where to find us. But we are writing stuff on writeforcalifornia.com. That's where you can find all our written stuff. If you're looking for some more other mediums, we're on youtube.com backslash writeforcalifornia. As I said, we're doing watch-alongs for all of our games. So subscribe there. 
and uh, hit, your, hit the alerts so you know when we go live. We're watching the chats as we do the live streams. So you can talk with us, ask us questions. We're more than happy to talk you through it. Um, and also, we're on Instagram at Right for Cal. We're on Twitter at Right for Cal. And of course, this is the Golden Bear Cast. And as always, go Bears. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash Blue Wire right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash Blue Wire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed.